I'm Carla, the Crazy Cross Stitch Lady. Welcome to my craft room. Thank you so much for choosing to come visit with me today. I really appreciate your taking the time to do that. So um, today is a bunch of new starts and new beginnings for me. Um, I feel like I have hit a new phase uh, in my life, a new phase in my stitching life mainly. Um, so I'll talk to you about that here shortly. But I want to start out with giving a shout out to one of our Floss Tube channels. Um, this is her name, the channel is Hedge Row Stitching. Uh, and I've just started watching her recently. She is from Cornwall and uh, she does a lot of samplers and she loves the um, just the very uh, classic sampler. She likes the reproductions. Uh, she even collects some of, I think she said she has one, or an original one from the 1700s, the late 1700s. And I love hearing the history of the samplers. So I thought that was just awesome. And, and she loves to trace her family tree um, and try to find connections with the sampler. So that's just really neat. So I will put a link to Hedgerow Stitching uh, down in the description below. So if you wanna check her out, uh, please do that. Um, but I do want to let you know also, she does quilting and she, a lot of times in her videos, like she'll, she'll do her cross stitching stuff first and then she'll talk about her quilting stuff and talk about the fabrics that she's bought and some patterns and things like that. And she loves to collect books on quilting and stitching. So um, just, I like to watch all of it because it's really interesting to me. And I have dabbled in quilting some, I can't say I'm really good at it, but I have dabbled in it. So I like watching it. Uh, but just um, know when you're watching her stuff, you'll see some stitching and you'll probably see some quilting stuff too. Uh, but again, I'll put her link down in the bottom if you want to check her out. All right. Um, I am going to start with, um, let's see. Actually, I'm going to talk about, it's not really haul, um, but there was a lady, a local lady, who doesn't cross-stitch anymore. She really doesn't have time, and she's got a lot of other things going on, and so um, she found out that I have, I sponsor a stitching club at my school and she wanted to give me all of her cross stitching stuff to help me out with um, giving the kids some things to work with. And boy, did she give me some stuff. So let me show you some stuff. So she gave me, she gave me a lot of fabric. Um, there was a lot of Ada in there, some 11 count Ada, which is really good because I try to start the kids out on 11 count and then once they get comfortable with that, I'll move them up to 14 count. And then if they decide they wanna try maybe some even weave and then maybe some linen, I just kind of gradually work them up. But she gave me this, I guess it's kind of an oatmeal colored Ada. Um, so it looks like this, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, that shows up the color pretty well. It's a, it's a pretty color, it's a neutral color, but it's also got, it's just a little bit different from white, but let me tell you, I mean, this is only, and I'm not even folding it out all the way, and there's still some I'm not even showing you. So, I mean, she gave me a ton of that. Uh, so, um, I've given some packs of the 11 count to the kids. I've, uh, I've got girls in my club right now, even though I encourage boys to join. But um, I'm keeping some of this for myself. Uh, this is 14 count, and I'm just keeping some of it because I do have some projects I would like to do that this would really suit it well. And actually, I'm gonna talk about one here shortly. But, uh, I mean, I just thought this was really generous. Now, she did have some stuff in her stash that was dry rotting, and I thought, mm, you know, couldn't really use that, unfortunately. Um, so I, I kept the stuff that was in really good shape. So I was really happy about that. That was awesome. And she also had lots of floss. So let me pull this up, sorry. I was trying to find places to put it and my table is just all a mess right now. I'm trying to 
organ reorganize my craft room and then I'll show you my reorganized craft room at some point. But she gave me three boxes of floss and these bobbins are not like just barely filled bobbins. I mean, these are full bobbins. So look, I mean, here's, here's one box. She's got them numbered, they're in order. All of this is DMC. And here is box number two, along with some metallic thread thrown in, and there are some um, cardboard bobbins in there. And box number three. So <laughs> she, it's giving me a lot of stuff. Uh, so what I've had, it, I've got two of my girls who have seen this now, and I had them go through all three boxes and I said, just pick out like eight or 10 different colors that you want. Because before I was giving them little, like I would take off about 18 inches or so and maybe do like two, two of those uh, for them to take with them. And I would give them bobbins to put their stuff on. But um, I just, when, when kids are starting out, you never know if they're going to really get interested or if they're kind of like, eh, yeah, this isn't really for me. And it's middle school, so they can kind of go back and forth. So I really don't, I didn't want to give them a lot, a, a lot of my stuff, and I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on supplies that they may or may not use. And I don't want that stuff to be wasted, especially like floss and fabric, uh, the fabric, especially the needles. It, it, you know, we, we can get more needles, but, um, with the floss and the fabric, I'm kind of, I'm a little stingy with that. Once I find out they're really interested, then I give them more. So it was just nice to be able to actually give them whole bobbins of floss and they can control the amount that they want or need. So um, she also, on top of that, gave me a huge stack of magazines. Now, some of them were more like just general crafty magazines, so I kind of put them aside. Um, but I let the girls um, look at the magazines and pick out ones that they were where they're really interested in the patterns or thought they might be able to manage. And I did keep back, there were some magazines I didn't put in the stack for them to choose from because the patterns simply were too complicated or they, they wouldn't have been interested in them. So I just kind of selectively gave them a stack to choose from. Now, a lot of them were, um, they're the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine, which is a very old magazine. The copy I'm holding here is September, October of 88. So that tells you, but I, I kept this one. <laughs> I love cows. I don't have any cows. I can't afford cows and I don't really have the time to care for cows, but I like cows and I like to look at cows. So I had to get this one because this is the cover and I, it's in there, so I will stitch it at some point. I'm not stitching it right now, but I will. And so I looked online because I thought, if I show you this and you really like it, you may want a copy of it. And I thought, this is an older magazine, so I wasn't sure if they would have it. It's on eBay, and there are several copies on eBay. Three, four dollars for a magazine. There are some where they want you to buy like a pack of magazines, like two or three of the magazines, but there are some where it's just this magazine. So I'll show you a few more of the patterns in here or the pictures. And if you really are interested and you like the patterns and you want the magazine, you can get it. So there's another one. But that was pretty. I really like this one too. This one's cute and I think it's called My Favorite Store. And I think, let's see, it's John Oler is the designer, I believe. This one's really cute. I may end up stitching that one myself. So I just thought that was cute. I haven't seen one quite like that. And it looks like it's, um, Let's see. I gotta take my glasses off so I can see. <laughs> you know, when you buy focals, you start doing that. Um, I was trying to see if it had um, like a lot of different little 
like half stitches and things like that. There's a lot of back stitching, um, which I back stitching's never bothered me. Uh, I know I know there are a lot of people who really don't like it. I don't know if it just bores them or or what, but they just don't like it. But I will tell you, there's back stitching in here. Um, but the rest of it, it looks like um, there are some. Um, Half and quarter stitches in here, it looks like, but it's it's very cute. I, I like it. It's diff, it's different from what I'd seen before. Um, let's see. I won't show you the whole thing. And of course, they, it's it's country crafts too because it's just a mix of um, various things. Um, let's see. Just now, this one. I, I have seen this somewhere before. This is not in the magazine, but I don't know. You might be able to buy it. I'm trying to see what the title is. Um, oh, it's called Cottage Sampler um, from Weichelt. I don't know if they still sell it. I may check into it because I like this one. That's pretty cool. So, um, if you want this, even if there are just maybe one or two patterns in here that you want, to me, it would be worth it just to pay the three or four dollars, and hopefully the shipping is not like the same amount, <laughs> but but you can go to eBay. I believe Etsy also sells the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts Magazine, so if you're interested in getting some back issues, I'd definitely check that out. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, I think that's it for that haul, sort of haul. I didn't, I didn't buy it, but it came in. Um, but I will show you, um, first of all, and this is my husband. He said, show them some of your FFOs that you had. I, I didn't, because I've stitched these so long ago, I didn't even really think to show you this, even though I've seen other stitchers on other channels show you their stuff. So I'll show you one. And then I'll have to show you a picture of the fam. I did my brother and his family where I had uh, transferred a photo into a cross stitch pattern uh, like I did with Michael Jackson. So uh, I'll show you that. I'll have to show you the picture because my niece has it right now and it's in Texas. So, But this one is called um, the Summer Stroll. And I just put summer, had Summer Stroll put on there. This is a dimension from a Dimensions Gold kit. And there's a little history behind this. So let me tell you a little story here. So, um, back in 2004, um, I had been working on this, hadn't gotten really far. And in 2000, well, I'll tell you, it was September 24th, 2004. That date will be emblazoned on my brain forever um, because I was involved in a pretty bad car accident that afternoon. Um, I had had some internal bruising um, you could see where my seat belt was. That's how badly bruised I was. And my right kneecap was shattered. And I've got, I've got about that much kneecap left. So they had to take the tendons and put them together. So I was in surgery for two hours that night. And then I was in a full leg cast for eight weeks after that. Uh, and then I had to be in therapy for a while. Um, but, um, I was back driving pretty quickly after that, but it was, it was traumatic in that it was, it was emotionally traumatic for me as well. If you, if you've been in a car wreck, you know what I'm talking about. If you've never, if you've been fortunate enough not to have been in a car wreck, or maybe it's just a tiny little fender bender, count your blessings, um, because it is, um, it is pretty nerve wracking. Um, and I was, I had nightmares and, and that kind of for a while. So, uh, badly affected me. But while I was in recovery, I was, um, out of school for a while. So they had a long-term sub substitute come in for me and I had plenty of time <laughs> to work on this piece uh, because I wasn't walking much. I had to use uh, crutches and I had a walker to get around the house so I could actually carry food back to my chair. And it was exhausting just trying to lug that cast around. 
So I, I got this thing um, mostly finished. Um, it was it was completely done in July of 2006. So that's why, I mean, it's been on my wall and I didn't think to show you. But I got her finished and I love her very much. She's my Victorian lady. So here she is. So this is Summer Stroll and it's a Gold Dimensions kit. Um, they still, you can still buy them. And this was, uh, this is one of their, the expensive kits. The floss came with it. Um, it has a combination. Let me see if I can, uh, it's, it's a little heavy. I'll bring her a little bit closer. Okay. I'm trying to keep the glare off as much as I can, but I can't take her out of the glass. So let me turn it, there we go. I'll turn it sideways a little bit. So it's a combination of tent stitches and full crosses. I believe this was on, I can't remember if it was 14 count or 18 count Ada. Um, I put her in the fair, the state fair. She got honorable mention. There was, and get this, there was another lady who had stitched her, had um, changed out some of the colors to, she, she put some darker colors in there. Like she put like a dark rouge on her cheeks. And <laughs> I told someone, I said, she looks like a little Victorian harlot or something. <laughs> I'm a bad person. What can I say? Um, but I, I, and I think she got, um, hers got first or second place. And I was like, what? <laughs> so, not that I, I, you know, there are some awesome stitchers out there. And I know when somebody does much better than I do, but I also know when somebody else was kind of, it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know. So anyway, can you tell them a little better? So, but anyway, I love her. She was one of the first big pieces that I did. And so she stays on my wall and I get to look at her pretty face for a little while. You know, when I come in here, I get to look at her. So anyway, there she is. And so now I will show you um, my, well, not my finishes, that was my, my whips. And so this first one, I'm sorry I have to keep leaning over because I'm like, everything's everywhere. I'm normally not this scattered. It's been a year. <laughs> this is the, well, let me see if I can find it. This is Modern Folk Embroidery. So Jacob DeGraff is the designer and he also owns the company. And this is Letters from the North number two. This is my first sampler, first sampler. Um, this has been, there have been a lot of firsts for me. And um, I've been, and, and I'll tell you this, just to encourage, if, if to encourage some of you who are, if you're just beginning to cross stitch, and I know I've got people from, I mean, all different ranges who, who watch these floss tubes and, I think we have a wonderful world of floss tubes out there. Um, and, you know, everybody's a little bit different, and that's what I love about it. Um, so if you're just beginning stitching, um, don't be afraid to experiment and just um, be curious and, and check out everything that's there because there's, there's such a wide variety of stuff now that you can choose from. When before, um, you know, you didn't have all of the different types of fabrics that you have now. You didn't have all of the different colors. And I mean, we have so many companies that make floss. And and I've been stitching for, oh, I don't know, close to 30 years. Because um, I started stitching when I had, I had just started college. And I started, and I was taught to cross stitch by a, a roommate of mine or classmate. And... Um, I'm, I've been one of those who, you know, I would have one project and I stitched on Ada. That's all I really knew. And I would just work through that one project and thoroughly enjoyed it. But it's like one project at a time. Um, and my OCD kind of kicks in and, you know, that's just kind of how I've done it. But, you know, here lately and 
you know, you would think somebody who's been stitching this many years would have already done all, a lot of this stuff, but you know, we're, we all have different journeys. Um, so don't ever be embarrassed about things you don't know. Um, don't be ashamed of anything. Just, just have fun exploring. And I'm having a lot of fun right now because it's this school year for us has been very stressful. This is the third year where we have had uh, school years affected by pandemic and um, we're all very tired, um, we're worn out, we've been stressed, and cross-stitching has been my savior. I mean, it has always been wonderful, but I feel like I have been blessed um, to have discovered this craft and been able to do it as long as I've been able to do it, and um, I, you know, I'm very thankful. Um, and, but I, I feel like I have uh, since I've been I've been discovering more and more of the floss tubes and and I've got local groups now that I'm involved with and I just feel like a lot of new doors have been opened and I, I've been working on a couple of projects but I feel like you know I, I felt like first I couldn't handle maybe taking on having several whips going on like a lot of people have several whips and it doesn't face them they just have a bunch and I thought, well, if I have several whips, I'll never get anything finished. It'll just be a bunch of unfinished stuff. And um, some people don't care about that. I like to finish things. Um, and so it was kind of like, it was a me thing. But I just decided like, well, you know what? Um, I'm getting kind of bogged down and I'm enjoying my the Michael Jackson piece that I'm getting ready to show you. But... I need a little more variety. Um, I'm getting kind of bogged down with that. So I was like, okay, just jump in there. Just jump in there and give it a try. So I've got several starts I want to show you. So I feel like I'm in this phase of new beginnings, a lot of new beginnings for uh, different things. Uh, so I'm going to show you several things that I've started here in just a minute. And um, I'm just, I'm excited. I, it, it's made me happy. Uh, I'm very happy to have these starts. And, and I started thinking, you know, uh, the way I'm going to rotate them, I'll have finishes. Um, and, you know, it's not it's not what I thought it might be. It's it's a lot more fun, a lot more fun. Uh, so uh, I just feel like this, everything I'm showing you here is going to be more of like a, a fresh start and new things and that kind of thing. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, but I will show you this whip that I have been working on for a while. So this is what... It will look like uh, he does a lot of monochrome and so he did this one in red and he does a lot of high count stuff he does a lot of 40 count and that kind of thing I don't I don't know that my eyes could handle that because you know I have to take my glass my bifocals off just to see <laughs> so, anyway but that's what that looks like and um, I will insert a picture here of where I was last time and then I will show you this this is on 36 count I think it's a seafoam green color and I'm using four different colors for this one um, and I don't know what I have done with my bag I will it's um, there it's like a rust and a brown. I've got a yellow and a green that I'm working on. So this is where I am now. I was afraid that green wouldn't show up, but it's actually the yellow that doesn't show up quite as well, but that's okay. Um, it, it shows up better than I thought it would. And I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I thought I might get a little bored with it because I'm used to doing like full coverage and that kind of thing, but I'm, I'm leaning towards putting in a lot more smalls, uh, and so I think that will help me because I want to make some ornaments. I, I, I want a holiday tree, and uh, so I'd like to make ornaments for different holidays, so I think I'm going to try that. Another new thing. <laughs> okay, and then here's my Michael Jackson one. Um, I don't have the photo to show you the photo that I actually put through the pattern maker for cross stitch program. Um, I maxed out the colors and I'm thinking 
I think I've got like 120 some odd colors in there. Um, this is 18 count Ada. I didn't want to go lower than that because if you if you don't max out the colors and if your stitch count or if your Ada count is lower, then it starts to look a little pixelated and it doesn't really look that great. So I maxed out the colors. I went 18 count and uh, I just used white Ada. Um, I did, you know, I don't, I don't see the point in paying more money for fabric like linen and other fabrics when you're not going to see it. So um, I'll show you a picture of where I was with him about a month ago and I was on spring break week before last and so I took advantage of that and I got a lot of the bottom part done. So I'll show you what he looks like now. So I've got more on the bottom that's done and I'll show you some close up and all this black here people keep asking me did you first when before they're thinking about seeing this they think did you really stitch all that yeah <laughs> i stitched all the black and they said didn't that drive you crazy and i said well no um i felt like i went into zen mode there and i, I because you just stitch and i could watch some tv and it's just it was very calming very relaxing for me so here's where I am on the bottom I need to get the rest of his shirt and I need to get the rest of the microphone and his glove now his glove oops guess I'll be picking that up in a minute um, his glove is not metallic thread that is white a trois that's the DMC uh, DMC has that series of a trois a trois is um, it's you have the colored floss and then there's a little metallic kind of strand that goes through it where it's not metallic the whole thing isn't metallic but it gives it kind of a shimmer and I don't know it looks like it's not really picking up on the camera and I'm trying to move it around to see if it'll pick up the shimmer I hope it does now the whole glove is not the H Y because um, it I figured if I um, use some of the called for colors, like like B5200 is one, and I think um, 3825, I think one of the other white shades, I put those in there so that you get more of a 3D feel, uh, where you can see, um, you have an idea of the fingers, separate fingers in there, and a little bit of depth to the glove instead of just like chunk of HWA. Um, but I think it's going to turn out pretty good when I get finished with it. So there he is. And I, with him, I, I was stitching it like in columns, but here's the problem that you get with full coverage. And I know you can't, it, the camera's not going to pick it up. But when you look at the black, you can kind of see there, there are like little ridges. And a lot of people, especially people who don't stitch, probably won't pick up on it. Um, but you can kind of tell there are some little ridges there where I stopped at each column. So I thought, okay. Um, so I was taking, I forgot what I was working on. I thought, well, let me do diagonal. Let me try diagonal. I may have actually tried it on one spot down here at the bottom where, I mean, you're not going to tell, but you're going to get ridges even with the diagonal. So I thought, well, what, you know, how do I get rid of these ridges? Because they won't iron out. This is not, it's not going to iron out. This is still, this will be fine, but eh, I would like to not have those. Um, but I was watching uh, one of the videos of the highway stitcher um, and she will start with like the highest color and then she will she will uh, cross country and she will stitch that color and then she'll go back and stitch another color and I think that might be actually the best idea and hers looks beautiful um, she does full coverage ones too I mean she does others but she does full coverage ones and hers are just absolutely beautiful so I think <clears throat> with my next full coverage one I may try that and do it that way like one color at a time um, and I don't grid so it would be a whole lot of 
very, very careful counting because I don't, I don't like to grid. I probably should, uh, but I don't. Um, I just, I never have. I may start. I may, if I start doing it that way, I may start to grid. Who knows? But anyway, um, I think I will try it that way, and we will just see how it goes. So let me pick up what I just dropped on the floor. Um, I do some editing with these videos just to make them a little bit smoother and nicer, but I don't edit this stuff out. I probably should, but I don't, but this is real. This is all, this is all me. <laughs> so let me pick that up. Uh, naughty things fall into the floor. Oh, and my shirt, well, I'll stand up and show you my shirt. I, I wear this sometimes like on our stitch days. This is the weekend forecast cross stitch with no chance of housework. And so far, that has been the case today. Although, I am gonna to have to get some housework done this weekend because my house is dirty. Ugh. We, we live, well, I mean, we have land and we, we don't really live out in the country but our property is off the road and we have trees around us and a lot, we get a lot of mud when it rains. And so um, the floors get dirty pretty quickly, even with the rugs that we have. It's just, it's a never ending saga, never ending story. So anyway, so I will have to do some of that when I get done with this. So that, that's what I'm gonna be doing when I finish with this. So, okay, so let me talk to you about my new starts. I have several new starts, and I'm very excited, and I think I'm gonna add a couple more to it, too, just, just for good measure, you know? <laughs> so, um, the first one, all right, let me find it. This is, I got this at the Silver Needle when I was in Tulsa, and this is called Pray More, Worry Less, and it's by Pine Mountain Designs and um, the artist is Sandra Workman. And it's a little pillow sham. Uh, so you get the sham and then you just stitch the middle part. So it's a little, it's a quick stitch. It, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I like it and I thought it would be an encouragement for me. So, um, well, you know, it, I can take this out. And I should have already taken it out. All right, so here we go. Okay. She has a series of these. I had two of them. So this is the other one. And so it, it comes with DMC floss. It has a pre-sewn pillow sleeve. And it came with a needle and the pattern. Um, you have to buy the pillow on your own. So I went ahead and I uh, separated the floss, which is a, um, just, um, that's a story in and of itself. So I finally got it all put on my um, floss drops here. So we are ready to go with that. And I haven't gotten much done on this pillow at all. I started it and then I got excited about some other things. So I. It's in my rotation. I just haven't gotten back to it. So not much done at all. I got a little bit of a white stripe. <laughs> That's what I've gotten done. <laughs> but it's a cute little pillow sham, isn't it? I like that. And you just slide the pillow in on both. Both ends are open. So then you just slide the pillow in. So I like that. So I'm going to work on that. And let's see, let me put that there. And then I'm working on, um, this is also for Modern Folk Embroidery. This is a free pattern that he has on his site. Um, and it's called Mir, a Ukrainian peace pattern. And with all of the stuff that's happening with Ukraine, and I won't, I won't go into that because my channel's not for political stuff. Um, but I just... I wanted to stitch it. I felt like I needed to stitch it. Um, and Mir's, it, this, it's put in Cyrillic. He put it in Cyrillic letters and it stands for peace. So this is what the pattern looks like. And 
Um, it's still on his site, so it's modernfolkembroidery.com, and I'll put his link down below. If if you are interested in maybe stitching this pattern, it is free. All you have to do is download it. And he does have a, a listing of some reputable places. I'm not sure if they're still accepting donations, but if you would like to help with the cause for Ukraine, um, some of the money it goes to, um, like, I don't, I don't think it's the Red Cross, but there are organizations who are helping with food, water, shelter, uh, for victims of the bombings and, and all of the devastation and that kind of thing. So he, he has those um, linked on his website if you want to check that out. And um, so I'm using the called for floss. So it's, it's just two colors. Um, it's 320. It's DMC 322, that color blue. And then it's a yellow, and this is also DMC 444. And I had these in my stash, so I just pulled them out. And I decided instead of a white, that I was, I had this light blue um, Ada sitting around, and so I thought, ooh, let me use that. Um, and so this is, I started on it earlier this week, so this is what I've gotten so, so done so far. This is my border. And it's, it's an easy, quick stitch. It's a fun stitch. And you may be saying, okay, so why did you go up in the corner when you got all this other fabric? Well, what I decided to do was um, I wanted to give enough space up here so I can frame it or do whatever. And so when I get finished with this, I'm going to cut this out. And then I'm going to use the rest of the fabric for any um, ornaments that I want to make. So I'm trying to save some of my fabric for the ornaments that I'm wanting to make for this tree that I'm wanting to put up in my craft room. So there's that. And looks like I've just started three. I thought I had started more than that, but I am actually getting ready to start something else. So let me put this back with this. Okay, this one is for my big toe. And I love this one. I had to have this one. This is called um, Time to Stitch a Serenity-ish Prayer. Um, and so it says, God grant me the ability to stitch the stash I have, to have the stash I want, and the time to stitch it all. Don't we all feel that way? I feel that way all the time. So this is what the pattern looks like. And I have changed out all the colors. I didn't use any of the called for colors, I don't think. <laughs> I'm using, actually, let me show you what I've done. That would be a good idea to show you that first. And I'm trying to think where I have put my colors because I had them pulled out. I got too much stuff out here. So anyway, I decided um, they did it on this like tan color. I'm trying to think what color that is. Um, well, oh, they did it on sand colored Belfast linen. So it's 32 count. I am doing mine on, this is 28 count raspberry Jobalon. I've stitched on Lugana. I've never stitched on Jobalon, so I wanted to try it. I like it. I like Jobalon. And I love this color. Look at the color. This is as far as I've gotten. I've got this, this upper corner. So it's this upper corner right here. So there's my corner. And what I did, I, I've changed out the red color, but this this is a green etois. And if I had my colors, oh, I think I found that. I think they dropped on the floor with everything else. So that's the raspberry Jobalon. I'm leaving the sticker on there until I write my notebook what my fabric is. But isn't that cool? I love that color. I love that color. I think it's going to really pop. So, yeah, I think, oh, there they are. They landed on my book, which is a good place to land. Okay, so the red is, and this is all DMC. This is 718. 
And then the I'm going to put, there's a little bit of blue, like berries or something. And it's 517 is what I'm using. And then the leaves that you saw, it's it's the green H-Y, it's C-471. Um, you can see the sparkle, it shows up. Not as much on camera, I don't think. And then the letters, um, they were doing a hand-dyed floss, so you can see just very subtle variations. And I wanted a little bit of variation, but I am using one of DMC's variegated threads. It's 4022. So that's what I'm using. Okay, so those are my colors for that. And then I have decided I'm going to do a sow. And that's big stuff for me. I have never done a sow. So again, new beginnings. I'm doing a sow. Um, I never did a sow before because I've got OCD big time. And I thought, I won't be able to handle that because when they come out with their stuff, like a section every month for you to do, I'm going to feel so much pressure that I've got to get that done before the next section comes out that um, it will it would be more stressful than anything. And I don't want this hobby to be stressful to me. And so for the longest time, I was like, I'm not doing one. I'm not, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'll just watch everybody else do their sounds and I'll just enjoy it vicariously through them. Well, I've been doing that for a long time. And then I thought, you know what? I'm trying these new starts. I just, let's, let's see if we can find a sow that is pretty simple and straightforward. And I just felt like I needed to learn to get over this, I got to get it done this month kind of thing. Because, uh, you know, I mean, I'm just, I got to get over that. Well, I was um, looking, somebody was answering a question on a blog or something. And they said, oh yeah, they said, yeah, I gotta, I really need to finish up the sow that I was working on last year. And something about that just clicked. There was something that just made made my brain click. And I thought, you know what? That's not even a big deal to them. They're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna finish that. And I thought, well, I need to treat it that way. Just, just as an ongoing whip. Uh, and so right now I am going to join a sow and I'm already four months behind because I'm just now joining it. But you know what? It's not bothering me a bit. I feel like that's a small victory for me. <laughs> uh, so I'm so happy. Um, I'm not going to worry about it, but, um, I will tell you where I found it and show you what I'm getting ready to do. Um, I found this sow on, um, it's Fat Quarter Shop that's doing the sow. And they do, uh, they, they mainly do quilting stuff if you are familiar with them, but they've got a larger cross stitch section now. They do floss tubes too. And the sow is card called Barn Sweet Barn. And I was like, oh, I love this. I just love, because I love barns. Well, so the pattern is, um, it's called Flea Market Baskets. And it's by Lori Holt, and she is of Be In My Bonnet Company. And apparently she does, they work with her a lot. But you see, this is the whole pattern for um, flea market baskets. But we're not doing the whole pattern. We are focusing on this right here in the middle. And so what you do is you stitch this on a square piece of, and we're using Ada, um, but there are different colors. They, they're changing out the colors and they're using five colors each month. Like January has, I, I forgot, I'll have to look and see. I think it's blues. Uh, February has pinks for Valentine's Day. March has greens for St. Patrick's. So it kind of goes with that theme. Um, and I'm gonna insert a picture here to show you what those colors look like they're post. I mean, it's on their website and they post the color every month. They post a new set of colors. You stitch this same thing. You stitch that every month and it's an easy stitch. It's got the blocks of color. And I thought I, I can handle that. You know, that doesn't get really complicated and it'll keep my OCD from kicking in. I can do that. I can change out the colors. I got all my DMC stuff. I can change it out. So you change it out and then you have 12, so you rotate them throughout the year. And let's see, what have I done? Oh, there's, there's a barn that you put it on. 
So I've got my barn. And I guess they did this to keep the items from breaking, but I got the barn that has the silo on it, just cause. So here's the barn. It's just, it's a thin piece of wood, okay? So there's the barn with the silo. And they give you, let's see. Let's see if I can put this piece on. So you've got one piece that goes on kind of like that. So I'll have to take wood glue and glue that on. And then there's a piece that you glue on for the window. And then they've got one for the top of the silo. And so I will take my wood glue and I will glue those pieces on. And then um, I'll show you a picture here. Um, it's off of their website where you um, put little embellishments on your piece once you stitched it. You wrap it around a piece of, I guess you can do foam board or cardboard and you put embellishments on there and then you put little magnets on the back and then you can take like steel washers or something and you can put them on the barn itself and that way you can place each one on and take it off. So I'll have to show you when I get finished with all of that. But I'm gonna show pictures here you know, uh, for the site and I will link the website in case you would like to join me in doing this sow. It's never too late. Um, you can join at any time of the year that you want. And of course, you don't have to stay caught up, which um, really relieves me. Uh, but I will tell you, I, I bought some wood stain. They stained their barn. And this is espresso colored wood stain. I, I was able to find a little jar, thankfully, and I've got a brush to use. And so this is the color that I'm going to paint the barn. And so hopefully I will have something I can hang up in my craft room and I can change it out every month. So that's the sow that I'm gonna be working on, so I'll keep you updated on that. All right, and let's see, I think that's it for that. And then my Stash Star, um, this is from, I bought this at the Silver Needles. Well, this is the Prairie Schooler, and it's called Bunnies and Chicks. Did that for Easter. So you have, let me get that closer, there we go. So what they did was they cut out um, figures of bunnies and chicks and um, they put some felt on the back and they just, they stitched these little bunnies and chicks and put them in, uh, I just think it's adorable. And of course you can, I mean, you can put these in little frames. You could, I, I'm actually thinking about making these into ornaments. Um, I think they would make really cute Easter ornaments. So. That's what I may use mine for. So anyway, okay, my crazy craft tip for the day. All right, my crazy craft tip is washing your hands. Now I use, I put these tips on here more for beginners than anything else, um, than anyone else rather. Um, although I also put these on here to remind me because sometimes I forget uh, and you see me, I'm, you know, I've been fidgeting with my hair and you know, all of this stuff on here, which is probably a big no-no. But anyway, this is me. This is what you get. Uh, but I try to wash my hands every time before I start a stitching session. And if I'm, I've been sitting for maybe an hour, hour and a half, I'll get up and I'll wash my hands again. Because even though they may not seem to be dirty, we get a lot of natural oils on our hands. And... You, you may not tell it at the beginning, but let's say if you've had something framed for a very long time, uh, especially if it's not full coverage and you've done a sample or something, sometimes those oils start to show up and they start, to, they kind of look like little stains on your fabric. And then it's very disappointing when we put all that work into our projects and then we've soiled it and not realized it. Uh, a lot of people don't wash their projects, and although there's this big debate about debate about whether you you know wash your project or you don't wash it. And some of them you can't wash because they're hand dyed fabrics and, and they'll bleed all over the place and you just you can't do that. Um, so I kinda, um, if, if I'm using like this raspberry jobelon that I'm using, I try to be careful how, how 
I'm handling it, making sure I've washed my hands because I know I won't be washing that fabric. Most of the Ada, you can wash. The Ada, I'll be able to wash. So I try to wash my fabric when I can, but even if you can't, if you're washing your hands quite often or if you're using a scroll frame, a lot of those things will help to keep some of those oils off and it won't damage the wonderful work that we spend so much time doing and we take a lot of pride in that. So that's my tip for today. So um, if you would like to see um, tu certain tutorials on things, if you, um, you know, if there's something you want to learn how to do, if you want to wash, watch me washing one of my pieces or watching my, my washing my Michael Jackson piece, which I have to do quite often actually, um, I will go through, you know, how to do that, and because there are you can't just wash it like you would normally wash something, and um, there's a certain type of little soap that I use, and and so I can go through all that if you would like for me to. Um, so you can just leave a comment down below and let me know if there are certain things you would like to see me do or if you want to learn how to do. If I don't know how to do it and can't show you, I will find out where you can learn how to do that and I will let you know. So I will help you out one way or the other. Uh, if you have questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer those as much as I can. And if you enjoyed your visit with me today, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel, click that like button, uh, click the notification bell so that you know the next time I'm coming to visit you. Uh, and so I do hope that you enjoyed helping me discover these new beginnings. And so be creative, be wonderfully blessed, and I will see you later. Bye.